And what do they have to be afraid of? Old friend. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 coolest creatures from Norse mythology. For this list, we're ranking the most fantastic and famous creatures from the world of Scandinavian mythology. What are your favorites? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, Sairimir. Much of what we know about the Norse gods comes from the Poetic Edda and Prose Edda, collections of poems and stories composed and compiled in medieval times. Sajrinir is the subject of one such story, an animal, sometimes described as a boar, who is killed and consumed by the Aesir, the principal gods, and their Einherjar. Yet again, Sairimnir has risen from his bones and escaped my kitchen. The Einherjar are warrior souls who feast in Valhalla as they await Ragnarok. Sairimnir is revived every day for this feast to occur again, an unenviable fate. In the Poetic Edda, Sairimir's flesh is described as being, quote, the best of bacons, which sounds pretty damn delicious to us. As run, run, you sluggards! Have you no appetite? This meat is not to be missed! Number 19, Edempla. We're sticking with the animal kingdom for our next entry, but make no mistake, Edempla is no ordinary cow. Edempla, mm. mm. who shot you up in here? You should be free. She's an ancient beast that's said to have revealed the body of Buri, grandfather of the gods, after licking away salty rime rocks from his body. She also served sustenance for the frost Jotun Ymir, feeding him rivers of milk from her udders. She's mentioned only in the Prose Edda, composed and compiled by Icelander Snorri Sturluson. Still, the fact that she basically serves as a primordial matriarchal figure for both Aesir and Jotnur, more on them later, is certainly impressive. Ah, ah. Number 18, Fapnir. A cursed ring, a dragon hoarding precious treasure, and a mighty warrior. Does this sound at all familiar? The story of Fafnir was a huge influence on fantasy fiction icon J.R.R. Tolkien, to the point where the master even wrote poems recounting the tale back in the 1930s. The original myth is recounted in the Icelandic Volsunga saga, and describes the greedy dwarf Fafnir who murders his father for treasure and becomes a dragon. <laughs> Fafnir hides and hoards his ill-gotten gains poisoning the land until he is ultimately slain by the hero Sigurd. Number 17, Mare. This anthropomorphic representation of a nightmare shows up within Germanic, Slavic, and Scandinavian mythologies. In Norse folklore, the Mare can be found within the stories of the Inglinka saga, another collection by Snorri Sturluson that describes how the gods arrived in Scandinavia. It's described as a creature that physically restrains sleeping victims by sitting on their chests or legs, all the while infiltrating their minds with nightmares. There's also mention of the Mare in Sami mythology from the area formerly known as Lapland that currently covers areas of Finland, Norway, Sweden, and Russia. Here, an elf known as Deatun is said to turn into a Mare beast that poses a similar threat to the unsuspecting while they rest. Number 16, Gwitlin Bursti. It can't be. Gullinbursti? The existence of Gwitlinbursti the boar was brought about thanks to a bet by the trickster god Loki. The mischief man challenged a pair of dwarves to fashion gifts that were greater than those another group of dwarves, the sons of Ivaldi, had fashioned for Odin, Sif, and Freyr. In response, the dwarfish duo, Brokr and Eitri, made Gwitlinbursti, whose bristled hair glowed in the dark. A boar of living metal who gave off light in the dark and ran faster than any horse. Gullinbursti. Additionally, the other two items fashioned by Brokr and Eitri were none other than the magic ring Drutnir and Thor's hammer Mjolnir. Needless to say, Loki lost this round. You've ruined everything. Number 15, Needhugger. 
the dragon need Hogar possesses an insatiable hunger. This beast spends much of its time gnawing on the roots of Yggdrasil, the world tree. And when he isn't doing that, Nidhogr can be found chewing bodies within the realm of Naustrund, a special place in Hell that houses the worst of the worst. Yggdrasil actually possesses an ecosystem all its own, with multiple creatures taking residence from bottom to top. Nidhogr possesses an adversarial relationship with an eagle that lives atop the world tree thanks to the gossip that's brought to him courtesy of the squirrel, Ratatoskr. Number 14. Milenk The ancient world is full of unique myths attempting to explain what happens after death. Often, these stories take on a grim tone. The Milenk is a tragic creature that's created when a mother abandons an unwanted child in the wilderness. The souls of these children roam the world begging to be named and given a proper burial so that they can finally be at peace. The origins of the Milink are more than a bit troubling, which is why their reputation as one of Scandinavia's most active and aggressive spirits seems to be secure. Number 13. Skut and Hati Hrutvitnisen The symbolism of duality occurs quite often within the world of Norse myth. Odin's wolves, Geri and Freki, are a great example of an animal pairing. Another is the pair of wolves that chase the sun and moon, the sons of the wolf Fenrir. Oh look! It's Skull and Hati, the giant wolves who chase the sun and moon. Where did they come from? They are named Skut and Hati Hrutvitnisen respectively, and it's this chase that explains the changing of night into day. Additionally, it's foretold that at the time of Ragnarok, Skull and Hati will succeed in devouring their prey, plunging the world into darkness and leading to the twilight of the gods. And long shall they chase, but not endlessly. For it is foretold that someday Skull and Hati will catch and devour their prey. Number 12. Hugin and Munin Hugin and Munin are another, perhaps even more well-known animal pairing from Norse mythology. These two ravens fly around Midgard and report all they see to the Allfather Odin. Their names translate to thought and memory respectively, and they're among Odin's most valuable assistants. Some tales describe Odin as bestowing the gift of speech to his ravens. They've done much more than just inform the god. Austrian scholar Rudolf Simak argues that jewelry depicting Odin with the birds suggests they accompanied him into battle or helped him heal injured animals. Number 11. Hildra From the front, these beautiful forest creatures look human. However, you can recognize them by a rather distinctive feature. A cow's tail, or a back that looks like a tree, hollowed out or covered in bark. A female of this race is called a Hildra, and a male a Hildrekatr. Hildras are seductive and sometimes watch over charcoal burners while they sleep, waking them in case of danger. Their kindness is usually repaid with some sort of offering or meal. Just don't get on their bad side because, according to folklore, they aren't always so friendly. Number 10. Draugr On the surface, a draugr is a bit like an Old Norse version of a zombie. Hideous and hungry for flesh, these reanimated revenants have a fetid stench and superhuman strength. They can be found guarding their burial mounds against those who might rob or disturb them. Sometimes, the appearance of the Dragor was foretold by a mist or temporary darkness. There is a bit more depth to these complex creatures, however, such as their intense jealousy over the living. Some tales also allow the Draugr magical abilities, such as shapeshifting. Basically, they're the last things you'd want to come across when tiptoeing around a grave. Number 9. Fossegrim This water spirit is closely associated with rivers, waterfalls, and water mills. Fossegrim is often found playing mournful tunes on a harp or fiddle, and can be persuaded to teach his musical and magical skills to humans in exchange for an offering such as food. If the offering is subpar, Fossegrim will only demonstrate how to tune the fiddle. However, should it meet Fossegrim's standards, the student's hands will be drawn across the strings until they bleed, infusing them with the creature's mystical skills. Hey, there is a price to talent. Number 8. Sleipnir It's not uncommon for larger-than-life mythical figures to have some sort of memorable companion or mount. 
We've already mentioned a number of Odin's animal associates, but chief among them has to be Sleipnir, his eight-legged steed. Sleipnir's origins differ depending upon whether you're reading the Poetic Edda or Prose Edda. But Loki is parent to the beast in both stories, together with the stallion Svaldifari. Sleipnir is known as the best horse among gods and men, a fearsome steed described by the Prose Edda as being gray in color and willing to ride to hell and back for his master. Number 7. Ratatosk Scurrying up and down the world tree Yggdrasil, Ratatosk is a troublesome squirrel who delights in gossip. Ratatosk is the squirrel who here shall run on the ash tree Yggdrasil. He likes to pass on messages from the eagle at the top of the tree to the dragon Needhugger who gnaws at its roots. He may just be a mischievous busybody who likes causing trouble, but some scholars theorize that he has more sinister motivations. By pitting Needhugger and the eagle against each other, he may be seeking the destruction of Yggdrasil, triggering a cycle of death and renewal. You did better than I thought. Now leave this place before I bite. Number 6. Jotnar From a realm of cold and darkness came the Frost Giants. <laughs> While the Jotnar are sometimes referred to as giants, the term refers to a variety of entities who dwell in Jotunheimr. Some are large and grotesque, others are strikingly beautiful. They sprung from the primeval body of Ymir. When he was dismembered to create the world, they sailed from his dismembered body on a river of blood. Many gods are descended from them, including Odin himself. The house of Odin is full of traitors. Loki was half Jotun on his father's side. While Jotunheimr is considered their primary home, some tales from the poetic Edda describe a conflict between Jotnar and Thor near the Danish island of Lesur. I hope it's true. Number 5. Dwarves. Poor taste. Norse mythology offers different accounts of the origin of dwarves. In the poem Völuspa, from the poetic Edda, dwarves were born from the blood of Ymir. Meanwhile, stories from the prose Edda depict dwarves as parasites that lived in Ymir's flesh. Got to be joking. The gods later gave them intelligence. Also in the prose Edda, four dwarves, Nordri, Sudri, Östri, and Vestri, represent the four cardinal points and hold up the sky. Throughout Norse mythology, dwarves take on a variety of roles portrayed as everything from mead brewers to metalsmiths. And he never forgave. And he never forgot. Number 4. Trolls The depictions of trolls within Scandinavian myth and folklore are varied, and as a result, share similarities with Norse legends of Jotnar. What have we got here? Let's cook him. Today, they're often considered as a cornerstone of Norse myth but the way they're described ranges from imposing and harrowing to human-like. What's fairly standard is their desire for isolation and general antagonistic behavior towards those that disturb their way of life. Contemporary depictions of the troll often present sunlight as turning them into stone, perhaps as a way to explain certain landmarks. One thing's for sure. Fuzzy-haired little dolls, these things are not. <laughs> Number 3. Hafguva This sea monster may have been the basis of another legendary beast, the Kraken. So large that it can be mistaken for an island, the Hafguva is said to inhabit the Greenland Sea around Iceland. It's sometimes categorized as a whale, but one much, much larger than any we know about today. In fact, it's also said to eat whales, as well as sailors and their ships. When it's in the mood for seafood instead of ships, it feeds by belching out bits of food attracting fish into its massive mouth. Number 2. Fenrir It is foretold that this mythical wolf, the offspring of Loki, will have a pivotal role in the apocalyptic events of Ragnarok. Oh, I smell something sour. 
The prose Edda describes how the gods, fearful of this grim prophecy, attempt to bind Fenrir. During this binding, Fenrir bites off the hand of the god Tyr, who willingly sacrifices the appendage to restrain the wolf. However, during Ragnarok, Fenrir and Odin will do battle, ending in Odin's defeat as he swallowed whole. Odin's son Vidur exacts revenge, driving a sword into Fenrir's heart. Lord of imbeciles, I will kill you, all of you. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Jormungandr The sea serpent Jormungandr, also known as the World Serpent, is another of Loki's children. Odin tried to banish Jormungandr by throwing it into the ocean, but Jormungandr just continued to grow. In fact, the serpent eventually encircles the entire world, biting its own tail. Jormungandr's fate is entangled with Thor, god of thunder. Stay calm, Thor! In the Eddas, there are stories of Thor attempting to either lift or fish for the serpent. These encounters threaten Midgard's existence, as Jormungandr's encircling form maintains the world's boundaries. Ragnarok will see Jormungandr break free, however, flooding the world. It will be slain by Thor, but Thor will die too, fatally poisoned by the serpent. Why is he doing that? Odin had that statue made in honor of Thor. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.